What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jess and I like to talk about things that make you want to sleep with the lights on and today's video is going to give you a little bit of half and half of that because we are going to be talking about the best on Netflix versus the worst on Netflix. As you are all probably more than well aware, on Netflix there is a variety of horror movies for all of the subgenres you could ever want. But are they good? Uh, TBD. <laughs> some of them are, and we're gonna be talking about some of my favorites, and we're also gonna be talking about some of my not so favorites. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna give you a horror movie that I recommend, that I love and would love for you to watch and check out if you haven't seen it already. And then I'm gonna give you a really, really bad one that kind of has the same premise. So for instance, if I'm gonna talk about a movie that's set in a secluded wooded area, I'm gonna give you a bad movie that's also set in a secluded wooded area that you should stay away from. Does that make sense? I really hope that makes sense because I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the first movie I recommend for you guys, The Good on Netflix, and that is The Ritual. Reuniting after the tragic death of their friend, four college pals set out to hike through the Scandinavian wilderness. A wrong turn leads them into the mysterious forest of Norse legend, where an ancient evil exists and stalks them at every turn. In the ritual, we are not only following these men as they are getting tracked by this mysterious monster being in the Scandinavian wilderness, we are following this group of friends who are trying to come to terms with the fact that one of them has passed in an extremely tragic way. And tragic because, you know, the manner of the death was awful, but also because it affects another person in their group and just really disrupt their whole dynamic. All of this anger and all these emotions that the group are holding within starts to come out and the tension just builds and builds and builds until it becomes so thick you can literally cut it with a knife. And in the middle of all of this, they're trying to outsmart something that they probably have absolutely no hope in outsmarting in the slightest, <laughs> but it's really endearing to watch because you find yourself rooting for somebody that you probably shouldn't be rooting for, but the character development that that person shows is just astronomical and just lends to what a great story this is. There is a movie that is not a pleasure to watch at all, whatsoever. Never watch it. It's called Open House. Open House follows a teenager and his mother when they find themselves besieged by a threatening force when they move in to a new house. That's literally it. I'm not even exaggerating when I tell you that this is one of the worst movies that I have ever seen in my life. It's awful. <laughs> it's not the worst, and trust me, we're gonna get to one that I probably think is the worst, but it's pretty bad, and it's such a blow to horror as a genre because there is no plot. There is no resolution. The ending? What the hell is that ending? I don't want to spoil it for you guys because I just think that's like wrong even though it's a crappy movie and I don't suggest that you watch it. Just Google the ending or whatever, but it's not good. The reason why I chose Open House to kind of correlate with the ritual is because the new house that they move into is also set in the middle of nowhere in the woods because of course it is. And I really, really hate to rip on somebody's hard work because obviously like they're not gonna make a movie that they're not passionate about, that they don't love. But God, it's really hard sometimes. <laughs> the storyline just goes in a complete circle, the climax is non-existent and the ending will just have you frustrated. Trust me on this one guys, skip open house. Moving on to another good, one of my favorite cult classics, something that turned me into the horror lover that I am today. And that's of course, Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street. In Wes Craven's classic slasher film, several Midwestern teenagers fall prey to Freddy Krueger, a disfigured midnight mangler who preys on teenagers in their dreams, which in turn kills them in reality. I'm not gonna rehash what's already been, you know, put out there about this movie because I feel the same exact way. It's a classic. Robert England as Freddy Krueger is one of the most perfect examples of spot-on casting that I could ever think of. Wes Craven really took the 80s and like all of the slashers that we got in the 70s, what we've been getting in the 80s, that have been following the same wash, rinse, repeat cycle of people being killed by one person and whether that's like somebody wearing a mask or somebody just who went crazy and all these plot twists or whatever it follows the same formula you know what i mean but then 84 hit and we got freddy krueger and freddy krueger wasn't just somebody in a mask that you could pull off a la scooby-doo freddy krueger was somebody who you could not escape from 
whatsoever. He was there. He was always going to be there. He was always going to come back and he's always going to get you. And I think that is what the horror genre needed in the 80s to really give it that push on to the next level and what we got in the 90s. So cannot say enough good things. Nancy Thompson is also one of my favorite final girls ever. I think she's so discredited. She's such a badass. Yeah, I mean, just like bury me with this and I'll be happy forever. What What's your guess as to, to what the bad is for this movie? Hmm. Yeah, it's the 2010 remake. I'm not even reading the plot synopsis because it's the same somehow, except just a lot worse. I really don't know how they approached going into this, knowing that they were going to attempt to remake one of the most iconic and best horror movies of all time. And they felt like proud releasing this. Again, like this is like, I feel so bad just talking down on somebody's hard work, but. What were you thinking? I like Rooney Mara sometimes. I think she does give great performances like in a ghost story or girl with a dragon tattoo, you know, but this movie, really turned me off of her and I find her frustrating to watch sometimes. Her performance is just so bland and dry and the thing is that's her as an actress. She kind of gives a bland and dry every single time. But for this person who was supposed to kind of take on Nancy's character, I know it's not Nancy, but it is kind of, there's nothing about this character that I wanna latch onto like I did Nancy. And I think that was where they really messed up. They tried to recreate some of those iconic kills. It just didn't work. But the one thing that I can say about this is that I kind of like the Freddy design. Way too much CGI for my taste. I'm a practical effects kind of gal, but it was, it was okay. But everything else, awful. Skip this one if you haven't seen it. I am so jealous of you. All right, moving back on to the good. And one of my favorite sleeper hits, one of my favorite John Carpenter masterpieces is gonna be Christine. Arnie Cunningham buys a 1958 Plymouth Fury, which he names Christine. Arnie develops an unhealthy obsession with the car, and after a bully defaces Christine, the automobile restores herself to perfect condition and begins killing off Arnie's bullies one by one. Of course, based on Stephen King's novel that Actually, this movie began production before the novel was even released. That tells you how popular King was at the time. I will happily sit and consume anything and everything made by John Carpenter and not complain about it. I have been starting to see some love pop up for Christine here and there, but I don't think it's talked about as much as it should be. Maybe that's because it's from the 80s. Maybe that's because it's about a killer car and some people especially whenever I try and suggest this movie to them are a little turned off at that fact. They're like, Jessica, how can a killer car be scary? And I say, you'd be very surprised. This movie is done in such a way where you can very clearly pick up on Christine's emotions, how she's feeling when she really just wants to like curb stomp somebody. And I think, you know, that combined with the performances given by the actors really just makes such a good, wholesome cult classic killer car movie and probably the best ever in my opinion. And one of the worst car movies that I have ever seen in my life, doesn't matter if it's a killer car, one of the worst car movies I have ever seen is actually a 2019 sequel to 1977's cult classic, The Car. And this remake is called The Car Road to Revenge. The Car Road to Revenge follows a district attorney who is savagely murdered and tossed out of a building into his brand new car. Mysteriously, the district attorney and his car come back to life as a single being with a thirst for vengeance. 1977's The Car actually is a pretty decent horror film that has garnered a following and has since turned it into a cult classic. But the supposed sequel from 2019 is a car wreck. See what I did there? This sequel is supposed to be set in a steampunk futuristic type world, but really it's just full of Mad Max Fury Road rejects who enjoy being killed by really shitty CGI. Have y'all ever seen that regular show episode that's called like Hello Govna and it's about like a British cab stalking Rigby? Hello, Govna. Just watch that instead. The last good that I'm gonna give you in this video, of course, how can I make a video without mentioning it? It Follows. It Follows is about Jay a young woman who is pursued by a supernatural entity after having a sexual encounter and must have sex with another individual to avoid it. I do have a question about this one though, like just like throwing it in there. What if you wore a condom? Does it work the same way? Like, I, I don't know. Like it does, it, in this world does like nobody wear protection? 
Moving on. Um, this is one of my favorite horror movies of the past 10 years. It's gained a cult following and for good reason. It's a damn good movie and it's terrifying. It follows as such an amazing example of how horror has constantly evolved, you know, evolving from slashers to supernatural, from supernatural that is only about possessions, now it's about ghostly STDs, but how that evolution has fit into modern day fears. And that's very valid and it's very cool to see. Micah Monroe is such a gem in this role and I really enjoyed her in the new movie Watcher. I highly suggest that as well. It's more of like a thriller, but we're not talking about that one in this video. But It Follows just has a way of sneaking up on you when you least expect it. And some of that imagery, specifically thinking about that scene in the doorway, I think you'll know what I'm talking about if you've seen it. Um, it sticks with you and it's there every time you close your eyes. And I think that's exactly what the director wanted in this case and it is very well done. But there is a movie that is probably the worst supernatural horror movie that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I hate this movie with such a passion that I will confidently say that. I hate this movie and I think it is such a shame that I spent money on it to go see it when I was in high school. I'm so pissed off at myself for that. But yeah, let's talk about the Bye Bye Man. Bye Bye Man. When three college friends stumble upon the horrific origins of the Bye Bye Man, they discover that there is only one way to avoid his curse. Don't think it, don't say it. But once the Bye Bye Man gets inside your head, he takes control. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time talking about this one because I could make a whole video just talking about how much I hate it. And I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna make a video talking about horror movies that I hate so passionately that it's like kind of funny. So let me know if you wanna see that. But I will say in this video, do not watch this. Don't do it, okay? Just don't. Oh, me? I was just looking for the plot. Have you seen it? because I, I, I can't seem to find it. Bye bye, man. There is no plot. When they were editing this movie, they cut out crucial scenes that were critical to the plot and just decided to not put them back in there. The acting was awful. The bye bye man, what the hell even is that? Bye bye, man. It also checks the box for every single bad horror trope there is. Researching demons on the library computer at night when you have a perfectly fine working smartphone. What? Creepy kid drawing creepy drawings of the bye bye man? No, that's just not cool. And. It's not something I would suggest you waste your time on. So there is my bad for It Follows. Please watch It Follows or all the other goods that I gave you instead of the Bye Bye Man. Bye Bye Man. That's all I have for you guys today. I really appreciate you watching. If you wanna see more, I would really appreciate it if you liked this video or even subscribe to my channel. It would really help me. If you have any suggestions for videos you wanna see in the future, leave them in the comment box below. Other than that, if you wanna follow me on social media at Discount Final Girl on Instagram, Thanks again so much for watching you guys, it means the absolute world to me, and I will see you next time. Stay creepy.